Hi, I'm Ron Nutter and welcome to another edition of Tech Bytes with Ron Nutter. In this video, I'm going to show you how to use Android Auto if you don't have Bluetooth in your vehicle. And it's easier than you might think. That starts now. The more I got into Android Auto and I started thinking about things for those of us who travel from time to time and even if there is Bluetooth in the vehicle, do you really want to use it? And I'm going to answer no, and here's why. When you hook up a vehicle, when you hook up your phone to a vehicle with Bluetooth, one of the things that normally happens, unless you say otherwise or are given a choice to say otherwise, is that your contact book, everything about your phone is going to be transferred into that vehicle so they can give you the luxury of looking at who you last called if you don't want to look it up in the address book and so on. I'm a little concerned about that because what's the one thing that when we, when we return a rental car, we're not going to think about? Resetting the Bluetooth in that vehicle so that it forgets about our phone. The other option is what if you run into a vehicle and it's possible to run one into a vehicle that you're renting that doesn't have Bluetooth or you may have an older vehicle where you just, that either wasn't an option at the time you bought it or you just, in order to get Bluetooth, if you knew you even needed it at that point, it was enough more expensive that do you really want it? And, I, and in the past, I would have answered no. So we've got two options that I'm going to show you. And they're both valid options. In fact, one of them's got even another use to it. So let's go ahead and get started. I've got this one device. It's sold under the name MPAL. Let me get, no, I really can't get much closer than that. I'm going to have to start setting up another camera. Uh, there's a link to this in the show notes. This is, is marketed as a uh, Bluetooth receiver. It's actually going to do both. And there's two ways that you can hook it up. First, you'll pair this to your Bluetooth phone, whether it's like mine, the Samsung Galaxy S9 Plus, or whatever phone you've got that has Bluetooth in it. First, you pair it to this. That's the easy part. Now, one of the things you'll want to do with an Android Auto is look under the Bluetooth devices and select this one as one that it knows that it can automatically start up when it sees this one paired. So, next question is, how do you get this connected to your vehicle? Well, if you've got, in most vehicles, they're going to have Bluetooth, and even some that don't are going to have either a 3.5 millimeter or what I would call the, the old way of calling it was the 8th inch audio jack. And it'll look like a connector, something like that. So what you can do, if there's room to do it, now the the MPOW device comes with a double male like this or a cable. And you're going to say, well, they're essentially the same thing. Yeah, they are. But if you've got the room, like, for example, uh, the Honda Odyssey that I've got access to, the 3.5 millimeter jack is down near the floor. So what I would do in this case is take this double male, plug one side of it in here, and then the other side would go into the audio input jack. With this already being turned on, and all you do is just, there's a little on-off switch here, turn that on and you'll see this pair. Now it's not going to pair for me right now because my phone's in another room and it's out of range. So this, and that then you're up and running, and you should see this device on your phone within, well, it, with, once it's automatically paired, you should see it in about 30 seconds to a minute. It just kind of depends. Now, if you're like another vehicle that I have, where the input jack is, is just under a uh, center console cover. So if you plug this in, you're going to be banging right against that. And that's probably not a good thing that you want to do. So in that case, I wouldn't use this double mail adapter. I would take the cable that they sent with it. And there's also a USB charging cable. And there's the port you want to charge it with. So I would plug one end of the cable in here, the other into the audio input jack. And you could see how your phone responds. You could probably just leave this inside the, the console or... If it's having problems connecting, then, you know, undo the, the uh, twist eye here and leave it out somewhere in the open where it can easily see or, or hear the phone. That's option one. This is, you know, so if you've got at least an, 
an audio input jack. This is an option, especially if you don't want to use a Bluetooth. And I would suggest respectfully that in a rental vehicle, you don't want to link your phone with Bluetooth for a myriad of reasons, several which I've already outlined. So that is option one. And this is all in the show notes. Now, the other one, I went and got a case for it, namely because this is going to be traveling with me. So I don't want this bouncing around inside luggage. So I went and got a case and this is the Anchor, let's see, does it have the name on it? Well, it'll have it on the book, Anchor Sound Court. And this is, by the time I got it, it was about $25, $27 on Amazon. So it's got a built-in battery. So this is a standalone Bluetooth speaker, but it offers a couple of options. With this, you can sit there, and if you have a vehicle that doesn't even have an audio input jack, this is an option. Now, you'll probably want to put some Velcro or something if you're going to have it inside the vehicle so this doesn't go bouncing around. This would give you the ability to be able to hear Android Auto or Audible or whatever else you're doing with Android Auto without having to turn up the speaker in your smartphone a lot. So this is an option. Now, when you're in the hotel room at night, you've now got a nice little sound bar, not really a sound bar, but you have a sound speaker that's going to be far in excess of what your smartphone has and you can have your leave your smartphone while it's charging and you can have this over at the little desk they have or, or whatever you want to do. So this has some nice options to it. Now, I do suggest getting the case for it and it fits it like a glove. And here, I'll show you. We'll take it in here and easier said than done when you're trying to look what it. And it slides right in. Now, there's a nice little cover right up here or pocket rather. And this is where I would take the charging cable that they send with the anchor device and just leave it right near it. You probably won't need it a whole lot, but you know what? It's easier to find when you've got a place to keep it. And I try to keep like things the way they are. You probably won't need the sound guide, but I mean the setup guide, but I keep it right in the case for it and it zips right up. And that really, so I mean, it's, you, you want to, granted, it's only a $25, $27 device, but you don't want the, one of the speakers getting damaged or something bouncing around. And this way, it just gives it a little more protection while you're traveling. So we've got the two different options. So this is something well worth considering. And it's maybe not a bad idea. This one was, I think about 20, it was a similar price range. And there are devices other than this you can use, but this is the one I found that from a size perspective, and this is one that I had seen looked at favorably, that it didn't have the problems with uh, audiobooks. Uh, something that I had run across is that some of the Bluetooth devices that I was looking at, when playing audiobooks, and I'm assuming with Audible, that if it stopped for just a second, then the Bluetooth connection would drop out. All I can tell you is the the smartphone that I've got, the Samsung Galaxy S9 Plus, and this device, or this one, I played an audiobook for several minutes and there were noticeable pauses in the book and none of them had the problem. So that's at least or at least two known options. Now, you know, if your phone is different or it's not on the current firmware, that could be something that you're going to have to deal with. But that is you know, something you may just have to kind of do some experimenting with. But these so far for me have, have worked well. So I'm always going to have these two options with me. This one I've got in the carry case that I keep, the Anchor Smart IQ charger that I've got so it can power this and a uh, dash cam that I keep in the vehicle. That's a whole other video that I'm going to have to think about because the dash cam is something with some of the people driving out there now. It's nice to have a video record of what's going on, but I digress. And this, so you know, they, they, they're, they're complementary, but they're also different. They're both Bluetooth devices. So if you're mainly going to be using a vehicle, this probably is the one to go with. If you're looking at a vehicle that doesn't even have an audio input jack and you're going to be in a hotel room, this at least gives you a chance to listen to some of your music or audiobooks or YouTube content, whatever, in something that you're not having to take a set of earbuds with you. Or if you get somebody else who's wanting to listen, at least you can both 
listen at the at the same time. I've noticed no audio lag, and that's one thing that I had run into with Apple's AirPlay when I was trying to do some of this with an iPhone, which, by the way, Android Auto is not available on the iPhone. And Apple, you need to think about letting Google put it on there because there's a whole market out there for it. But then that gets into Apple's sandbox, and we all know they don't like to play well. Uh, so, it, you know, having both of these is probably not a a bad deal. And just kind of depends on what's going to work best for you. There are uh, links in the show description. That is something I do get an affiliate commission on if you buy. But if you don't buy, that's fine too. I'm more concerned about getting the information out to you because this is not something I really had seen talked about a lot. So I wanted to make sure there were options on the table, especially if you have to travel. So, you know, this one would be great if you're in a rental car and you don't want to tie the your smartphone into the vehicle, which by the way, if this is already prepared, then you're just plugging in, let everybody get turned on, and then you're heading down the road. This would be good for the hotel. So there, it's just a matter of deciding what's going to be best for you. I've got several other videos that I'm looking at for Android Auto, and I'm reaching out to some manufacturers to see about getting their uh, devices in as well as I want to make sure that we can cover as much of of what we can on uh, on Android Auto because it has a lot of potential especially with having Google Assistant available and I'm going to look at some of the other podcast clients but in troubleshooting a problem with my podcast that also is, is a mirror of what you're you're seeing here but it's audio only so you can listen to it in the vehicle it was it was nice to have that option because it's there's a lot of content that's video only and I'm trying to make sure that I can make things as easy for you as I can. If you have any questions about Android Auto, I may not know everything, and if I don't, I'll see what I can do to find the information for you. But so far, it's I've been very happy with with what's there, and who who knows what's going to come down the road because we're still very much in an early situation. So appreciate your time very much. If you haven't subscribed to this channel and this content has been valuable to you, please uh, consider subscribing to the channel and make sure you click on that little bell notifications icon so that you can stay up to date when I do release new uh, content. I'm trying to do about two to three a week. If you would like to listen to this on a podcast, I've got this available through iTunes, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, TuneIn, you, you name the service, I'm trying to be on to make it as easy as I can because this is something that I'm really interested in and I hope I can help you get that same level of enjoyment out of it. Well, that's about all the time we have for now. I'll uh, get ready to do some more videos and, and podcast content. So thank you very much for your time. And like I said, there's always links in the show notes to the things we talk about. So if you decide you want to get one of those two and you click on them, would appreciate it. I do get a small commission of that one, and that helps offset the costs I've got on getting everything up and running for the channel. So thank you very much for your time, and we'll see you again soon.